Thank you. A serial killer has just finished performing a string of violent murders. The killings have garnered national attention and the whole world is waiting for justice. The killer gets caught by the authorities, but the bad news for us and good news for him is that he'll probably never have to face any real consequences because he could plead insanity. A specialist rules that the serial killer is suffering from an extreme case of dissociative identity disorder and is harboring north of 10 different personalities in his head. Only one of the personalities is the killer, so now the authorities just have to find out which one. It's a lot to choose from because some of the multiple personalities are old, some are young, some male and some female, and the most innocent looking one is the nine-year-old boy. Believe it or not, the children are the most dangerous personalities when you're dealing with a case of dissociative identity disorder. When a kid suffers a traumatic experience, it could cause them to create more personalities after that experience. The doctor in the movie is used to dealing with patients that are mentally unstable. The criminal is placed in a wheelchair and has to sit through a boring psychiatric appointment with the doctor. The doc tells the patient that they will perform a corrective procedure to fix his mind. If Nightmare on Elm Street has taught us anything, is that you shouldn't let random people in your head or whatever. Now that's crazy, but to be fair, the doctor has experience playing mind games, so it's worth a shot. The mental procedure backfires, and the main characters go more insane in my opinion. The process causes them to believe in the supernatural even more than they did when the movie started. Nobody could have known he was gonna do that! No one human. I understand that the three of you think you are superhuman. When the multiple personalities from the serial killer are fighting each other for the spotlight, the doctor is able to call the different personalities to the forefront at will. The doctor's research seems questionable at times, and I doubt any of this will hold up in court. However, the paperwork from the file shows the different names of the different personalities the killer goes by and corroborates the doctor's theory. You shouldn't mix oil and water, especially when they match. Both the killers are placed near each other, and one of them gets an inevitable idea of a bad guy team up. The bad guys put on disguises and manage to escape. When they're free, the smart one was smart enough to change into a suit to avoid attracting attention from the authorities. The dumb one is only dumb enough to keep the same yellow uniform that all the prisoners wear, so all eyes are on him worse than Tupac when he runs away from the facility. During the final battle, there's water everywhere and the stupid hero doesn't take off his heavy coat to increase his degree of difficulty. The bad guy goes after a damsel in distress, but thank God the man with the heavy coat saves her at the last minute and allows her to run away. One of the multiple personalities gets shot in the torso. It doesn't look like he's going to die at first, but never mind because he definitely dies. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>